Hey friends, if you've read and studied your Bible, like I hope you have, like I know I need to do more so, you know, the Lord makes many promises in the scripture. One of the promises that he makes is that he will keep his promise. I serve a promise keeping God. If God has made a promise, you can bet everything that the Lord is going to keep that promise. Now, one of my favorite promises in scripture comes from the gospel of John. And in the Gospel of John, he told his disciples, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would not have told you. And I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again to receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Now, I don't know about you, but to me, that shouting ground, that, you know, that... That just gets my my boat running, if you will. That that uh makes my eyes start watering, if you will. That promise right there lets me know that first of all, I don't have to be scared of death. When death comes, I can embrace death, knowing that when I close my eyes in death, I'm going to open my eyes the next second in the presence of God Almighty. Not only that. But from what I understand in Scripture, the moment that I close my eyes in death, I know that the Lord Himself is going to come and take me by my hand and lead me to the promised land. If I was to die right now before anybody could get to me, before anybody could check my pulse, before anybody could pronounce me dead, I would already be shouting on the streets of gold. I would already be in the presence of the Savior. I would already have seen my daddy, my mother, my father-in-law, and all my loved ones that have gone on before me. I will already have been with them. And by the time the day's out, I will have been in heaven for a thousand years. Because the Bible says a thousand years is a day, and a day is a thousand years. That's hard for the mind to grasp. It's hard for my mind to grasp. But uh, y'all bear with me. But anyway, the Lord made this promise. But not just at death. The Lord has made a promise that he's going to come back again. But before he comes back to set up his kingdom on earth, he is going to call his people up. He is going to snatch his people, those who have truly put their faith in him, those who are truly born again, blood washed, children of the living God. He is going to snatch them out of here. It's called the harpazo, I believe it is in Greek. The word we know it best, best by is rapture. And a lot of people say, well, the term rapture is not in the Bible. Well, the term Bible is not in the Bible either, but I have one at home and I've got one in this truck right now, so that's, that's, that's not an issue. The Bible says that we'll be called up in the moment in the twinkling of an eye. An old Jack Van Ebby used to talk years ago that General Electric did a test and the twinkling of an eye is 11 one hundredths of a second. So when the, when the trumpet sounds for the Lord to call his people home, <clears throat> in 11 one hundredths of a second, you're going to be in the presence of God. You're going to be here on earth like I am driving down the road. And that, when, the, when, the, when the trumpet sounds, in 11 one hundredths of a second, I'm out of here. I'm gone. And so is every Christian that has ever truly put their faith in the Lord. Now that scripture comes out of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. But it says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, the voice of the archangel, the trumpet of God. The dead in Christ shall rise first, and those of us who are alive and remaining shall be called up together to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. And catch this last part. Comfort one another with these words. I believe in a pre-tribulational rapture. I've studied all different forms of the rapture, and I won't get into that right at this moment. But I believe the Lord is going to rapture his church out of this old world before the seven years of tribulation that the book of Revelation, the book of Daniel, all the Old Testament prophets, the Psalms, all the uh, different books in the New Testament talk about before this time of, of evil, before this time of uh, judgment befalls this earth, the Lord's going to call his people out. I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to that. But you know, if you'll think about it, it says the dead in Christ shall rise first. You Christian, how would you love to be, as the old McCamey song says, I'd love to be standing at a loved one's graveside when the Lord declares the time will be no more. 
the graves will burst open and all the saints shall come forth and there'll be a glad celebration on that shore. My only problem is I don't know whose grave I want to be next to when the rapture takes place. But I believe that the Lord, I believe that the rapture is going to happen at any given moment, at any time. The Bible tells us to be ready at all times because we know not when the Lord is going to return. But I do know that I believe, I do know that the Lord is going to return soon. Will it be in my lifetime? There's a good chance it will be. It may not be in my lifetime, but it's, it's 2,000 years sooner than it was when he first said he was coming back. I'll put it to you that way. And if you think about it, a day with the Lord is a 1,000 years, and a 1,000 years is a day. It's been about 6,000 years since the Lord created everything. And if you take that time at 6,000 years, that's six days. <laughs> at least a 1,000 years left. And if you know Revelation, you know there's a 1,000-year millennial reign. So basically what I'm trying to say is, like John Hagee would say, pray up, pack up, and look up, because before long we're going to be going up. If you are a believer, if you have put your faith and your hope in the Lord Jesus Christ, if you have not done this, if you are lost and undone, you have never accepted Christ as your Savior, you're going to be left behind, and you're going to go through a seven-year period that the Bible calls the tribulation, where the best way I know to put it in a short amount of time is hell itself is going to be rained down on this earth. It's going to be rained down on a gospel-rejecting, Jesus Christ-rejecting, cross-rejecting world. All his believers are going to be gone. It's going to be people who have rejected the Lord. Will there be an opportunity to be saved? Yes, I believe there will be. I believe everybody has the opportunity to be saved, but at the same time, the Lord says that the Antichrist will cause a, str a strong delusion to cause many to be damned. So I will put it to you this way. Make sure that you accept the Christ. You accept Christ on this side of eternity. Don't wait till it's too late, people. Trust in the Lord today. Receive him as your Savior. I like the old Orthodox prayer where it says, Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Now I think that right there pretty much sums up everything when it comes to receiving Christ as Savior. You, you repeat that prayer, you mean it from your heart, and God will save you. He, the Holy Spirit will set up in your heart, and He'll lead God and direct you. When the rapture takes place, you'll be out of here with the rest of us. That's all I have right now. Until next time, may God richly bless you, my beloved.